wrestling is life wrestling is life wrestling is life is wrestling Welcome everyone to another episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling with Cody Deaner. I am Cody Deaner and I am a professional wrestler. I'm a professional wrestling producer. I'm a professional traveling motivational speaker. I am a father to four children and a husband to a beautiful, understanding, lovely wife. She's so understanding because it is so crazy right now. It's the Christmas season, and despite the Christmas season's busyness and just the festivities, I'm super excited, by the way. I love this season, especially with four kids. There was kind of a section of my life where I wasn't as excited about Christmas, but now I have four kids. It's like I'm a kid all over again. Uh, I get to live vicariously through my children during this season. Uh, but my wife, she's understanding right now. There's this hustle and bustle, getting ready for the holidays, getting ready for Christmas, couple busy weeks with the kids at home from school. And here I am bringing you content, recording this introduction to this part two episode with Diana Perrazzo. She's letting me go into my office, into my studio and do this despite all the stuff that needs to get done. Thank you, honey. You are amazing. She also listens to every episode of this. So this isn't just like something I'm saying to just you guys to try to get over with my wife. Uh, she actually listens to this. So I am kind of trying to get over with my wife, but she's listening to this right now. And why does she? It's because she learned something from these conversations. She knows exactly why I started this podcast. It's so that I could help people bring some positivity into the world through this wonderful world of professional wrestling and teach people that wrestling is life and life is wrestling. And there's a beautiful commingling of both of these, and it can teach us some valuable lessons. And my wife has been learning valuable lessons, including some from last week's guest Diana Perrazzo. This week we got part two with Diana Perrazzo. But before we talk about where we left off last week, let's just quickly tell you how you can support this show, the show that I bring you free each and every week on your podcast platform of choice. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcast or Spotify right now, why don't you just press pause and rate this podcast or write me a review even better reviews, help the algorithm, help more people learn about this podcast and this wonderful conversations that I'm having with my friends. Please go do that right now. If you give me a good one, I'll read it right here on the show. Other ways you can support is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. You can just donate a couple bucks or you can have an option of three different levels. And now those three different levels are different types of perks. But some of those levels is going to get you the entire back catalog early and ad free each and every week of these conversations. It's going to get you bonus stories, both video and audio that you can download with my guests and all kinds of wonderful stuff. I share some personal things, diaries from on the road and pictures of being on the road and all kinds of stuff over there, over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. You can get yourself a t-shirt at uh, pro wrestling tees.com slash Cody. I was going to say you can get it on wrestling as life as wrestling. No, but you can get a t-shirt at pro wrestling tees.com slash Cody Diener of the logo of wrestling as life as wrestling just in time for the holidays. Head on over there or get yourself or a loved one a cameo at cameo.com slash Cody Diener. Even better, why don't you go and get yourself? a rest when dead t-shirt either one of the ones that are in the back if you're watching this on youtube.com at cody diener podcast get one of the two that's in the background get this sweet rest when dead hat that i'm wearing right now or get yourself a signature series shirt i got some signature series shirts up on rest when dead.ca so does crazy steve so does jody threat two other rest when dead sponsored athletes head on over to rest when dead clothing on instagram and check out their entire collection they got some wicked awesome merch and hmm, i just so happen to be the vice president of the company so i don't know maybe i'm a little bit biased but i'm biased in a good way because everything that they do everything they put out is positive 
both the messaging as well as they give back to the communities that they're in. They give money back to the fitness community. They give money back to the wrestling community and their local economy because they source their materials from local merchants, give back to the local economy. So, you know, you're not just getting really super high quality merch. You're also giving back to the community in a positive way. So go check out restwindead.ca. All right, that's enough shilling about my stuff. Let's shill our next guest. Let's put our next guest over. I don't even need to do this because she got herself over last week in part one of this conversation with the virtuosa Diana Perrazzo, but let's do it anyways because she's so awesome. If you listened last week and you're even listening right now and you get something from this conversation, jump on your social media platform of choice and let Deanna know how awesome she is because she was just in the middle of being open and vulnerable with us last week on her release from the WWE. She got this dreaded phone call from a 203 area code number and realized, mm, I think think this call means I am no longer going to be doing my dream job at the WWE. And she was right. How did that conversation go? How did she feel about that conversation? What did she learn from that conversation? And most importantly, this week, as we leave off there and continue in this conversation, you will learn what she decided to do to move forward in her career, her life, her love for this wonderful business of wrestling, but really what was going through her mind and her mindset and how did she change her mindset about life in general through this experience? That's what this podcast and show is all about. I'm able to bring on guests like Deanna who talk about how wrestling is life is wrestling and we can actually learn how to better our lives through the things that we experience in our journey in wrestling and diana is going to tell us all about that now we're talking to the virtuosa she's an impact knockouts champion an impact knockouts tag team champion and ring of honor champion a triple a champion she's been the wwe she's been the nx in nxt she's done it all and now she's on my podcast here for part Two. So without further ado, let's continue this fascinating and wonderful conversation with my friend, Diana Perrazzo. You needed to go to those people and say, just tell me what to do. Because if you didn't, you probably would be sitting here. You you probably have regrets going, oh, I should have spoke up or I should have done this. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 I feel like I've always been taught to just like stand up for yourself. You're your biggest advocate. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I was so beaten down and no one was advocating for me. I actually think people were probably doing the opposite of that. Yeah. That it was like, if no one's going to do anything for me, I have to find that within myself. And I have to be the person who did it. And if it turns out bad, then that's okay, too. But I was in such a bad space that like it couldn't have gotten any worse. It was yeah. just like I need out of this place. And, um, you know, I did get released. I, I didn't ask for my release. But, you know, like three weeks before that, I had kind of said, like, if we're not going to improve on this, then then what are we doing? Like, just let me go. I don't want to be here. You don't, guys clearly don't want me here. So let's just end this, you know. And um, so when I got the phone call that I was released, it was like, oh, what, 203 number is calling me. I'm getting yeah. fired right now. <laughs> yeah. But also it was a great conversation with with Canyon Seaman at the time because he was like, I think this is what you want and you're going to end up really happy. And I was like, mm. I think so, too. So thank you. You know, oh, and, wow, that's good. As negative as it was, it kind of ended, at least with Canyon, who I had worked with for like seven years up until that point on and off. Like um, it ended up really positive. And I think, mm. yeah, I wouldn't be me today and I wouldn't be able to look back like and be like, I was part of the problem, too. You know, it wasn't. Mm. 25 year old Deanna thought like it's them it was them it was them and now yep. you know five years removed I could be like I had a lot to do with that <laughs> yeah and, and now I work to to form better relationships and to act better and to be more professional and to bite my tongue a little bit more and you know yeah. like I learned a lot from those worst times of my life it's interesting you say that because it was something I was going to bring up earlier which I think applies now in what you just said like 25 year old Deanna is you're a young yeah like when you you were trying to get in at 19 I'm like I 
I was thinking in my head as you were saying that, like, thank God they didn't hire you at 19. Like, you're a child. You can't yeah. even rent a car. Like, <laughs> yeah. like you're not to 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 go into those. Like I, we were just saying, these political, this political stew, uh, the Shark Tank at 19. Oh my mm -hmm. God! Like everything happens for a reason, you know. So I think someone was looking out for you to to not, you know, yeah, virtually to not let you go. Because the same happened to me. Like I was, I had some breaks really early when in my early 20s, and I if, with the WWE, and then I didn't get signed, and I'm like, ah oh, man. And I was, it was one of my first big disappointments. But looking back on it, I'm like, I think. I was not ready and I don't even know where I would have ended up mm -hmm. if I would have gotten a contract at that young. Oh my gosh. I'd, I wouldn't be nearly as happy or where I am today. I don't think, I think I just wanted it because it was something I'd want since I was young, but it wasn't, the timing wasn't right. Yeah. I think we're you know. conditioned, right? Like mm. I also grew up, I didn't know what TNA was. I didn't know what ring of honor was. Like I didn't know until I got into wrestling really that there was alternatives to WWE. So I feel mm. like we're, if that's how you grew up, like you're conditioned, like I need to be at this place to make it is this place. Yeah. And then, yeah, when you get there and you're like, Oh no, like this isn't, I don't think you ever get into wrestling thinking about all the backstage stuff that you're going to deal with like you just no. see wrestlemania or you see you know battle for glory or you see now aw at wembley and you're like that's where i want to be that's the pinnacle but then it's like oh there's there's 10 years of struggle to get that one hopefully get that one moment and, and you don't know as a kid that you're going to deal with all that other stuff so i think yes. that like when 100 uh, percent, do i think like it was fortunate for me at 19 to not be put in that position because i even feel now at 25, I thought I was such an adult and I wasn't. I mm -hmm. thought I was so smart. I thought I was doing the right things. And I look back and I'm like, mm, I would have handled that so differently today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a as a married woman, as someone who has been at the top of a company for a very long time and like had those conversations and dealt with those situations, like just those, you know, four years um, have made such a difference. So I, I, I am so grateful that 19 year old D didn't have to deal with that and also had like people around her being like it's okay we'll divert and go over here and try this and give you different life experience in this because i feel like there's kids who get signed at 19 right now and it's like go be a kid like you're a child go yes. party with your friends and turn 21 and go to the bar and like yeah. do all those things i didn't do those things because i wanted to wrestle and i mm. get why why if that's your dream you don't but like you're a kid and you mm -hmm. shouldn't be dealing with the craziness of wrestling just yet. Yes. And thank <laughs> and thank God for your mother who said, I'm not signing that form when you're 15. Because yes. you and I both know of the crazy, seedy under underbelly of wrestling and the potential yeah. con artists and people that are out there that exist in wrestling that we're not thinking about when we're 15. We're like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm just gonna go and everyone's gonna everyone's gonna help me because I got a dream and I'm gonna do this thing. And it's like, oh, like I was so naive when I started wrestling. I had no uh -huh. idea. You know, I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. So thank goodness <laughs> your, your mom didn't sign that <laughs> form. Uh, but when you did decide I'm going to wrestling school, you're 18, you're an adult now. Did your parents come around to the idea and like approve of it? Or did it take a while? Or how did that go? Yeah, um, so I can tell anybody. I just like went to this wrestling school on a Tuesday <laughs> night and signed yeah. a contract to pay like three grand. I didn't oh, have wow. Pay. Like, yeah. I worked a part time job and was going to school, you know. Um, so when I came home and I was like, I'm going to be a professional wrestler. My mom was more mad that I agreed to pay all this money mm. than she was that I was going to be a wrestler or hope to be. Um, and she was always super supportive. Like she knew that's what she wanted to do for the last 10 years. Like, and so now it's up to you to figure out how to do it. Yep. Um, my dad, like, and my mom also growing up would buy us all the pay-per-views. My parents are divorced. So like my mom would always like, we, she'd buy the pay-per-view or she took my brother and I to countless SmackDown. She took us to WrestleMania one year. Like she was supportive of just being a wrestling fan. And then yep. also maybe one day the dream um, where my dad like is not a wrestling fan. My dad knows nothing about wrestling. My dad is very, um, I don't want to say sheltered in that way, but was very uh, sure. concerned with like, me putting myself out there and wanting mm. me to like respect myself in my body and, and all those things. So when he was like, all I know is that they wear skimpy outfits and strip on TV, you're not doing that. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And so it took him a long time to come around. And he also works crazy hours at his job. He's up super early in the morning and like works till 6 p.m. And um, there was never like a great time for him to come to a show. And I'm also really grateful that he didn't see me wrestle at the VFW in front of three people. Um, You know, because his first show was Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City um oh, for wow. ring of honor so yeah. it was like a packed crowd full of like bullet club t-shirts and like he just kind of like looked around and was like what is this world and then he shocked me when i because i got beer i sat with him in the crowd after i wrestled and uh just tried to like enjoy that moment with him yeah. and he was like you didn't tell me you knew dusty Rhodes son because cody was wrestling yeah. and i was like i didn't know you knew who dusty Rhodes was oh, <laughs> like that's so we cool. had this really great moment of like yeah. Well, now you get it. And like, mm. you're letting me in on a few things that maybe you wouldn't have told me otherwise. And, um, mm-hmm. but now he's like my biggest fan. I went on the internet that you did an interview and you said this and I'm like, dad, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so amazing. He's I love full that. Circle. <laughs> Isn't that, that's so special that you got to have that moment though. I think that's really cool. Yeah. And so my, uh, very similar to you my mom was always super supportive my dad not so much but unlike you my parents did see me wrestle in front of three people at the vfw hall and <laughs> be like what what the hell are you doing yeah. and honestly i was thinking the same thing right <laughs> like when we're when we're five we our dream is wrestlemania and then so i get into independent wrestling not knowing even what this world is and then mm-hmm. I walk out for like my second show ever, and there's literally eight people in the audience. I count them, and I go, there's more wrestlers in the locker room than there are people in the audience. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, <laughs> I'm thinking the same thing my parents are thinking, what the hell am I doing? Mm-hmm. Like, that's that's enough to break some people and to be like, this is ridiculous. I'm done. Like, this isn't what I was envisioning, so I'm going to get out. Yeah. How did you not quit after going to the ring and doing that for three people like what kept you going and motivated um i think just that goal of like but i'm gonna be in wwe one day like Mm. this is what you do because right i had read all those books all of you know chris jericho's experiences eddie guerrero's experiences but uh uh batista's experiences like all of these people's experiences that were kind of like i wrestled in front of no one in mexico i was held at gunpoint and i was like i went to japan and did this and i'm like i have to do all those things like if i want to be the best woman's wrestler and i kind of always like loved that like technical style of wrestling like the like the cruiserweight style where it was a Mm. bit of everything like if I want to be like that, but a woman and change women's wrestling, then I need to go do that in Japan. I need to go do that all over the country. I need to go to Mexico one day. Um, so I just kind of always had this mindset of like, that's if that's what it takes, then that's what I'm going to do. And yeah. um, it, so it never deterred me. It was just kind of like, this is part of the process, I guess. Yeah. Was changing women's wrestling always something that was on your mind since a young age of wrestling when you started, yeah. when you got into the business? Yeah, because again, like it was that like bra and panties matches. It was yeah. the Playboy pillow fight matches, and it kind of like changed a little bit, you know. Like, um, and we had like Mickey and Trish, and like a couple really great storylines. And I think you know, like Alicia Fox was so ahead of her time, and you know, Michelle McCool and Melina were doing really great things mm-hmm. before. Um, you know, they, like they'll talk about it now that they were told you can't do that anymore. Like that's mm-hmm. too much for women. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just think I saw like these like, glimmers of hope of like. Yep. I, but I'm more than that. I know I'm more than that. And I think that if they just gave us a chance, if they gave us time, if they gave us stories, you know, um, then we could show the world that we're like actual athletes and we're good at this. And yeah, it was always that, like, I don't like that women are put in this position and I want to be part of the change of that. Um, but I didn't know that there were other companies that were changing that. I just thought yeah. like, this is this is all that there is, you know? Yeah. What always fascinates me is when i speak to um females like yourself like for me when i was a kid i had heroes other male wrestlers because i had i had a a blueprint to go by whereas someone like yourself like i think it's really interesting that you're able to you you still were even a fan of it and that even this thought of well i i can be more than that 
-hmm. especially like girls that are watching like brawn panties matches and are thinking to themselves, I want to be a wrestler, but I know I don't want to do that. Like that's a really hard thing to even overcome yeah. as a female <laughs> watching the product. You know what I mean? Like how, yeah. where does that come from for you? I'm fascinated by that. Cause I didn't have to tr overcome that because I get to watch the guys that get to be in the main event and get to headline and they get to have serious storylines and et cetera. Whereas as a girl watching that, not so much uh, dur during certain eras. Yeah. I don't know. I think if it wasn't going to be in wrestling, I think that I had, I was a cheerleader. I was a gymnast. I ran track. Like I did, uh. I did sports outside of, uh, like outside of wrestling that, mm could build my confidence and I had a you know great like again my mom was so supportive of all all the things I wanted to do um I had really great friends who were supportive of what I wanted to do and I had a really great group around me especially when I was young just playing other sports with and okay. um, I think just as a young girl I was told like you are strong you can do whatever you want to do you should dream big like and I was given the positions to like be cheerleading captain my senior year of high school I was you know like I was always built up in other aspects of my life. So I feel like I didn't see that as a negative. I just saw it as like, there's work to be done here. And if I can do that work, I can succeed. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't think I'm a stranger to hard work. I think that when I put, again, I'm a control freak. When I put to my, my mind to something, I'm going to figure out a way to get it done. Yeah. And um, I just think, yeah, I had a really great like support system my childhood to do whatever I wanted to do that I just was able to like translate that into wrestling. And then also when I got into wrestling at 18, I had a really great trainer and then a really great support system and, and friends around me that like we held each other up and, yeah. and fought a good fight together, you know? Okay, hello, I, my name is Eden, and my dad, Coney Dina, is a wrestler here, and he's going to be the boss of this video. You're going to let me be the boss? I'm, yeah. so, I'm surprised by this. I'm going to, let's, let's both be the boss, how about that? No! Oh, that you just said that like you're the boss? <laughs> this is Eden, how old are you, Eden? I am five years old. And what color is your hair? Blonde. I have a very beautiful blonde five-year-old girl. I want my listeners to just picture her and her pretty face right now and know that she's basically the boss. And I'm not the boss. Oh, Dad's I'm the boss. Oh, this is wonderful. This is very rare occurrence. Okay. I want to talk to my listeners about two things. One, Christmas. Yeah. Ian's going to tell me and talk help me talk about Christmas. Christmas is Santa brings us presents mm -hmm. that um the elves make okay. and when he brings them people make if they're feeling sick it makes them be happy and play with lots of toys when your father and mom is busy. Okay, that was interesting. When they're what? When they're far away, Mama's busy? Is this like something you saw in a movie or something? That some kid had to play with a toy because they're far away, Mom was busy? No? This just is like a hypothetical thing? Maybe there's a kid out there who has a busy mom? Because your mom's busy, but she's not far away. Your mom is always playing with you guys, and I she helps even, around the house. I didn't even say far away. Oh, what did you say? I said Dad. Oh, far away dad. Well, that's true. Not far away dad. I didn't say anything about <laughs> far away dad or far away mom. I only said if your dad is busy or your mom is busy oh. playing with the toys. Okay. I, I misheard you. Uh, and I'm not going to bother rewinding this to listen to it to see if I'm right or not. Uh, but let's talk about that. The first thing was Christmas. All right. Can I say something without you spitting into the mic? Or? Hey, wait, I'm the boss. No spitting. Ah. Hey, we have to quickly just tell them at least about the sponsor because this is te technically a commercial happening right now. Okay, let's do that after. Let's do that after. Let's. Hey, wait, let's not do that. That's not, I can't hear that's not, anything. Oh, well, because you just knocked out your, your headphone there. <laughs> All 
All right, uh, be quiet. Can I do a song? No, you can't. Not until they tell them about a, a thing. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. I thought I was the boss. Oh, it's very clear I'm not the boss now or ever when it hey, comes to my five-year-old Eden bells, while she sings this Christmas song. I'll oh, try to tell you about ceofit.ca, no no which is a website hey, you can go to bells, in Canada, all around the world, actually. You ship to the United States. It's in Australia and in Canada where ceofit.ca will send you supplements, um, wonderful things for your muscles, brain function. Okay, I'm done here. Bye. if you are in Canada and you spend over $120, then you get free shipping. And you notice that Eden's not doing that right now. I'm just going to be talking. I'm kind of doing my own commercial now. Uh, Are you done? You singing? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you at least tell them about CEO Fit? Fine. Okay, you, you, that's okay? All right. Yes. Yeah, I need you to help me because they want to hear it from, they hear it from me all the time, but they, it's way better if they hear it from you. It's ve- it's Christmas. Are you excited about Christmas? No. Oh, okay. That wasn't the answer I, mean, I was expecting. Yes. Oh, okay, that was. Uh, what do you want for Christmas? I want a bunny robot, a huge teddy bear, and... A makeup set. Do you think we can get any of that stuff at ceofit.ca? Yeah. Oh, we can? All right. Uh-huh. That's not true, but I sure. Yeah, people should go I to CEO. Get, people I should go to ceofit.ca. Let's, everybody right now, go to ceofit.ca and see if they have a robot bunny, a big giant teddy bear, or a makeup don't. kit. Oh. Don't, 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 do don't, that. don't. Should my listeners go to ceofit.ca? No. Oh, wow. Okay. You're they, not very good at this. They can't. <laughs> doing commercials. They don't. can't go there? No. Oh, why not? Because it's only for children. S- oh, those things are for children, the things that you want. Yeah. Okay. But CEO Fit, you can be a grown up and go there. Can and we you can stop get lots doing of stuff. This now. Now. Can yes, we can. Thing? If we do a good sign off, we can. You got to sign off, though. Do you know what that means? Bye. Yeah, we got to do that. Let's do a Christmas sign off. Say something Christmassy. Jingle bell, jingle bell. All right, everybody. Yes. Oh, I I interrupted your good Christmas goodbye. You do it one more time. Jingle bell, jingle bell. Bye. That was wonderful. Bye, Eden. Bye. That's big. That's what I was actually going to go to. You just answered my question. I was going to say, like, when you got into wrestling, did you then gravitate towards certain people that had the same goals and you could help build each other up? Because, like, for me, when I'm wrestling on that show in front of eight people, I'm not the only one. So when I come to the locker room with my head down going, oh, my God, what what's going on? <laughs> Every other person in that locker room is in the same boat because we're all wrestling in front of eight people. And some yeah. guys are going to go, this is ridiculous. I'm done. And other guys are going to go, hey, man. It's okay. It's not always like this. There's more. There's 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 another side to this. There's light at the end of the tunnel. And I gravitated towards those people rather yeah. than the people that were in the corner going screw this and deciding to quit. I gravitated towards the people. They're like, no man, keep moving forward. Did you who who were some of those people for you? Like, was it fellow female wrestlers or was it that that yeah. all had this goal? Like, hey, we can. You're, you're kind of thinking in your head, maybe women's revolution before that even was a thing, you know, like how, how did, yeah. who are those people? Um, I think like my trainer, uh, Damien Adams uh, yep. was like, I trained with him since day one mm-hmm. when I was 18 and walked into the wrestling school, he was there. So yeah. he's been a part of my life still to this day. He's one of my best friends. Yeah. Um, and I think that he really implemented from day one that like, this is a team when you're out there, it's not a team sport, but behind the scenes, this is a team sport. Mm -hmm. And he, when I finally was able to wrestle and we had a few other students who could wrestle, like we all traveled together to every show. We would pack the car and go to Canada or pack the car and drive to Massachusetts or drive to Louisville, Kentucky. Like we really treated training like a team effort, like a team sport. Mm -hmm. And, um, then we got someone like Tasha Seals who came to train with us. And then Karen Q, who's uh, 1D2 and NXT, came to train with us. And th- so then I had two girls who I could do this with. And nice. I could travel everywhere with and, like, really lean on. Um, mm. That became my best friends and still are. And yeah. uh, then I met Chelsea Green and Britt Baker, who are my two other best friends. And I'm like, okay, well, now I have this really strong group of women who um, – 
we don't want to wrestle anyone else. You know, if, if Britt can get me a book, booking in Pittsburgh to wrestle her, then I was driving to Pittsburgh. And if I yeah. could get her a booking in Jersey, she was coming to Jersey. And, you know, Chelsea um, had broken her collarbone and was like, can I come stay with you and train with Damien for like, you know, three or four weeks while I rehab that? Absolutely. Come live with me. Like, it was just like, what do we need to do to take over? Because we're going to mm. be supportive for each other and do those things. And, yeah. um, you know, like I said, those are my four best friends in my real life still 10 years later. So um, having them, I think, and just like knowing that like they're fighting the fight with me and they're going through the same things I'm going through. I'm not alone in this. Yep. And also like I could call them anytime. I could text them anytime. I could talk about what's happening in my real life. It's not just wrestling was really what got us all through. Yeah. I think that's so important to know that, realize that for us to be talking about this right now, for anyone who's listening to this. I think it's so important that we're talking about this because one thing that I say to both young wrestlers and to young students when i go around and I do my motivational speeches at schools i let them know like they see they see me up on stage talking about both my successes and my failures and then, and they kind of look up to me and go oh wow you accomplish these things you're on tv they think it's like this cool thing and then i have to i very much tell them i did nothing that i just told you about in my story alone mm -hmm. you can't do it alone you have to find your people yeah. And so those people are so integral to your story because all your excesses you can attribute to the Tasha Steeles, the 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 Chelsea Greens, you know, those 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 people. And in wrestling, it's even more important because you're literally putting your life on the line with these people. Mm -hmm. Right? Find someone like a Chelsea Green or a Britt Baker that you get into the ring with and you're friends with you said earlier um that you had uh damien adams said well it's a team sport not so much in the ring well yes it, it's backstage well both it is because yeah. if you got to be on the same team because if <laughs> you don't if you pick me up and you drop me on my head it's done right so you, yeah. we are on the same team so you you grow my non-wrestling fan listeners can't fully appreciate really how close you become yeah just by being in the ring with somebody for me, as soon as I wrestle somebody, we're immediately friends. Like yeah. <laughs> almost, almost immediately. So, yeah, we're friends now because we just did this thing together. But it must have been even next level for you and those friends because, and I, I know what this is like because it's with me with my friends that I met from day one who I've stood up in their wedding. They were at mine. Like they're my friends for life now because we've done this thing together where our lives are in each other's hands. And we have this common goal together that we share mm -hmm. and we're helping each other. That's the yeah. big thing. So this, this is the other side. Cause I'm, I'm all about focusing on the positive. This is the other side of what we talked about earlier. This like shark infested waters of politics and backstabbing and trying to pull each other down. Yes, that happens. But the other beautiful thing about this business is you have, you meet people that say, yes, come live with me while you're trying to accomplish this thing. Yep. Yeah. I, I have a couch for you or a bed for you or whatever. Like that's so beautiful and important. And I don't think highlight enough about wrestling that yes, we do that for one another. Yeah. Well, I think the, the, the biggest thing is like, well, you talked about like, I wouldn't be successful without failing. And I mm. think that when you find like people that you can fail with, <laughs> kind of, yes, and like absolutely. grow that together, you know, like I think that's really what fortified, my, like Chelsea and I were always super close, but like going through NXT together and going through some of the experiences that I talked about earlier together and like her being by my side through all of that was like, oh, like, if you weren't already my best friend for life, you're, like, my ride or die. Like, yeah. she was my maid, my matron of honor in my wedding. Like, th there's no one that can understand kind of what we go through more than our wrestling friends because they're also going through it with us. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, if you could find someone that's not your spouse or your significant other that you can travel with and sit together on a plane with and share a hotel room with and, and like, get a routine together with, like, 
that is what makes relationships. So yeah, yep. there are friends and we wrestle with them and there's that bond when you can protect each other and keep each other safe. But there's like this, mm. this bond outside of that, that it's like, yeah. I actually live my life with you and I spend more time with Chelsea some days than I do with Steve. Yep. And that's important, you know? Yeah. So, I yeah. just think that like um, you like grow through these experiences and, and um, Britt actually said something like my wedding weekend that has always stuck with me of like uh, just particular to me. We kind of went around and everyone said something nice about me, which I don't yeah. love. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Like, yeah. You've been my friend for 10 years and, and you've been super successful, um, but you've never changed nothing about you has changed. You were the same person. And I think that is kind of what I hold closest to my heart of, of, you know, my journey is like, I've never let that change me. I've never let the politics or the sharkiness of wrestling or my success or my failures. Like I've never let that change who Deanna Perrazzo, the human being is. Cause at the end of the day, that's all I have. Like at the end of the day, my kids might not like wrestling and, and the championship bell I have hanging up might mean nothing to them. Or you know, like in 20 years, what I've done doesn't matter anymore because someone else is doing it and probably doing it better than I have ever done it. So if I could be the same human and like all the relationships I form are the same relationship I've had from the beginning, then that's what's most important, I think. Yes, I I have found for me in my life that this goes back to something you were saying earlier. You said a couple of things that really stood out to me. One was you've kind of realized that it's the journey, you know, not the destination, which is kind of that cliche. It's all about the journey, not the destination. And I know for me, getting in that car with those friends to drive and do that show together, that's what I remember and what I love about the business, even yeah. more so than the destination. Because like we said earlier, you get to the destination and you realize, oh, this mountain that I've climbed, I get to the top of this mountain that I, and I thought I was going to feel this certain way. And I realized, oh, no. I'm just at the top of a mountain now. Now, mm -hmm. now what? <laughs> and, uh, and, and for me, I've learned that we have to find our sense of happiness and our like our true sense of happiness and joy cannot hinge on our success in wrestling. Mm -hmm. If if it does, we're setting ourselves up for disaster. Yeah. Right. We have to find that source of joy and true happiness outside the business what what is that for you because I, I i i i feel like you're you've grown in the sense that especially you saying you flip the script and you realize now success in wrestling isn't what's going to really bring me true happiness even though it does make me happy because i love yeah. it but <laughs> i'm not saying that but i'm like what what is it for you outside of this realm of this crazy world of wrestling yeah i think wrestling brought me steve yeah. So there's that, like, that's my greatest relationship. That's my husband. Like we have a beautiful home. We have three beautiful, healthy dogs. Like I've been able to find like real happiness outside of wrestling, creating a life with him. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that, like when I got released, it was like, well, maybe I'm not going to wrestle anymore. I'll just be a normal human. And so I went back to college and I think yeah. having that outlet, I just finally graduated this summer, like having that to just like, I can put my phone down and turn off wrestling and dive into a history book for three hours. And yeah. I have to write a paper about nuclear weapons, like, or, you know, like yeah. the civil war, whatever it is. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sure. I can just, it has nothing to do with wrestling. I can turn off every other aspect of my life and just focus it on this and get this work done. And I think that was my, one of the greatest things I ever did for myself was to give me something to love and be passionate about and a goal to accomplish outside of wrestling. Because when I was 18 and trying to go to school and trying to wrestle and try to work a full-time job, I gave up school because it was like, I could go to school one day. You know, I can't wrestle forever and I need money to be able to wrestle. Um, but I could go to school at any age. And to do that at 25, like was it was the perfect timing for me. I needed an outlet that wasn't wrestling and something I could pour my soul into that had nothing to do with wrestling. And I'm sure it's so important. I don't, maybe this didn't come into play for you, but I'm... I'm thinking this when you're married to a wrestler and you're a wrestler, it can be very easy for that yeah. house to be wrestling 24 seven. Yeah. And that isn't always good. <laughs> like you need the things outside yeah. of wrestling. So to find your thing outside it, I'm sure is really important for your mental health. Yeah. Because we are a wrestling house. Wrestling is on every single day of the week. 
you know, whether yeah. we're watching it or it's just in the background, it's on. Um, or in your mind, you're going through promos, you're doing yeah. your thing. I get and it. And I feel yeah. like Steve is worse at that than I am. Like, I can kind of, like, not really talk about, like, this move or this match or, you know, like, um, with our impact schedule kind of being, uh, like, we're not taping as frequent, you know, towards the end yeah. of this year. Like, I don't think about it because I don't, I don't do indie shows anymore. Like, mm. All I have to worry about is like, I got impact this week. So let's make sure my gear is clean. Let's make sure my bag's packed and let's go. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, he can't turn it off. So yeah. I think that like, I have to be like, Hey, be patient. You know, let's cross that bridge when we get there. It's like, it's easier these days for me to turn it off than I think it is him. So it's that yeah. balancing act of like, I know you're excited and I get it and I'm excited <laughs> for you, but like, let's put our phone down and focus on dinner. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, Deanna, I, we started our conversation talking about Steve le <laughs> and, and your wonderful marriage. Well, we can end it now too. I think I, I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. I, uh, I, I want to say one thing I very much appreciate about this conversation is that, uh, I furiously made a bunch of notes before this conversation and I didn't look at it once. I, oh, I didn't, good. I didn't, I didn't get to any of them because <laughs> you, you are, I knew you were going to be like the perfect guest for this idea of wrestling, but then talking about life and how they intermingle. Um, I, I didn't know, I expected it to be good, but I didn't expect your insights and, um, vulnerability and just every wonderful Every wonderful thing I can say about you and this conversation, I'm saying it now. I Thank I you so, so much. I so much appreciate it. I know that there's fans that are wrestling fans are listening to this right now. There are non wrestling fans that are listening to this right now. That the things that you had to say have helped them in some way. So. Um, if, if a wrestling fan wants to say, thank you, Deanna, for saying this, or thank you for bringing this up because I never thought about it that way. How can they get a hold of you and say, thank you? What's the, how do, where do they tag you in their social media posts to say, Hey, Deanna, you're the best. And we appreciate you. <laughs> um, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Deanna Perrazzo. Okay. That's nice and easy. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. Uh, one more thing. Yeah. Um, you can say no. Um, but I've had no one else who said no. So you'll be the, you'll be the biggest heel in the world. If you say no to this, Deanna. <laughs> I let at the end of my conversation, which we're going to end right now for the, for the free listeners, I have a Patreon where I like to offer a bonus story to yeah. my, my, my patrons who are supporters of this show. And I give them just something exclusive to them, just like a little bonus story that maybe they've never heard before or that we're not going to let the 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 freebies listen to right now after i hit stop we're, we're going to head on over to patreon and we're going to get to listen to a very exclusive uh story from diana that i i like to preface it this way it's going to be a story that a civilian wouldn't believe <laughs> yeah now you're, you're gonna have time to think about it and the <laughs> the nice thing about this is the cool thing about wrestling is the majority of our life can't be believed by a civilian. So, <laughs> so it can, it can really be anything, but um, I'm going to, we'll, we'll end it now. We'll have a little, we'll give you a second to think about it. And then yeah. uh, my patrons can head over on to patreon.com slash Cody Diener and listen to this bonus story from Deanna. Are you cool with that? Can, will you give me a couple more minutes of your time? Yeah, absolutely. I just got to think of a good story. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. We got time, but before you start thinking, I just, again, thank you for Deanna. Uh, thank you for doing this. I very much appreciate it. You've been nothing but wonderful. Thank you so much. That's going to do it for another episode of Wrestling is Life is Wrestling. And what did I tell you guys? This conversation is exactly what I wanted this podcast to be. Uh, opportunity for wrestlers to come on, share their journey with wrestling fans, not to just talk about wrestling, but to talk about what their journey has taught them in their lives. And hopefully how those successes and failures can maybe, if we just are willing and vulnerable enough to share that story, how it can maybe help some other 
people. And I think, and I know because I've already heard from some fans from part one, and I know it's probably going to come in here from part two as well, that Diana has been able to help you in some way by her opening up and sharing her story with us. I just want to again say thank you to Diana for sharing with us again this week her story. She's just been nothing but wonderful. Head on over to social media and tell Diana Perrazzo exactly why she's so awesome. And I'll continue to do the same on my social media at Cody Diener. If you got something from this this week and you want to consider maybe helping out this project that I'm doing here, bringing this podcast to you, and you want to continue to help me be a professional podcaster because to be a professional podcast, you got to make a little bit of money. Well, I'm bringing this to you free each and every week on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcast, on YouTube, the video streams on there, as well as every single podcast platform in the world. This is heading on out to you. You can help. You can support this podcast over on patreon.com slash Cody Diener. You're not just going to be giving me money and not getting anything out of it. No, you're going to get the entire back catalog, each conversation I have, all the way through in audio video format, no advertisements, and as well as next week's guest that's going to be coming up on patreon.com slash Cody Diener this weekend. Oh, my I'm not going to tell you who it is. You've got to follow my social media at Cody Deer, and I'll be announcing next week's guest soon and putting up the full conversation early and ad free. So you don't got to wait till next Thursday to listen to part one or the following Thursday, listen to part two. You're going to get the entire conversation this weekend over on patreon.com slash Cody Deaner with next week's guest. I'll give you a hint on who it is. I've worked very, very closely with this guest in the past and really a lot just in the last few years. I haven't known them for a super long time, but have grown very close to this person through working with them, and they are freaking awesome in all the ways. So happy that I met this person have gotten to work with them and have made myself a friend for life. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to figure out who it is this weekend over at Cody Diener, and you're going to very much enjoy our conversation that we'll be having the following two weeks for part one and part two. You can get the whole thing over at patreon.com slash Cody Diener. Ah, you love just listening to me shill and hype that, don't you? Oh, man, just go over and do it then, and I'll stop saying it. <laughs> <laughs> Other ways you can help support, go to ProWrestlingTees.com slash Cody Diener. Get yourself a t-shirt. Go to Cameo.com slash Cody Diener. Get yourself a video. Or better yet, get your family member a video. Man, it's just a couple days and it's Christmas. Oh, I love this season so much. I just get to spend more time with my family and with my kids, which reminds me, let me just sign off here. I got to go hang out with my kids, man. We got to go hang out. I got to go jump on the trampoline with my kids. Maybe we've been playing a lot of football, even though it's cold here in Canada. I've been tossing the football around in my big backyard with my kids. And then when we get really cold from that, we all go in the hot tub together. So you know what? I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to go play some catch with my kids. I'm going to go jump in the hot tub with my kids. And I'm going to have a very Merry Christmas. I hope that you guys have a very Merry Christmas. If you're listening to this, uh, when this episode drops, it's a few days away. I will see you on the other side of Christmas next week. And in the meantime, and in between time, I've never said this before. I sound like a radio host right now, but sure. In the meantime, and in between time, I'm never going to say this again. That sounded so cheesy, but I will say Merry Christmas. And I will say, if you come back next week, you will learn yet again that wrestling is life is wrestling merry christmas and we'll see you next week wrestling is life wrestling is life wrestling is life is wrestling